We start with the puzzle. Does a boat floating on water feel the downward force of its weight? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this nothing nerdy video on forces. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. Forces are vector quantities, which means they must always be stated with the direction and their effects must be analysed using vector methods. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. But first of all, what is a force? Here we define it as an effect which causes a mass to accelerate. We say unbalanced because often two or more forces are acting at a point, but their effects cancel each other out and they balance. Then there will not be an acceleration. We must always take into account all of the forces acting on a body when considering what causes its changes in motion. If this catapult is fired, it will exert an unbalanced force on the rock and accelerate it while they are in contact. So forces cause acceleration, which means that they can have the following effects on a moving body. Stopping it, starting it moving, speeding it up, slowing it down, or changing its direction. The last one is a reminder of the vector nature of a force. A tennis racket could exert any of these effects on the ball. When we talk about forces, not only do we have to respect their vector nature by always showing the direction that they act, we also have to talk about them as one object exerting a force on another object. For example, the contact force of the ball on the wall. There are several different types of forces you need to know about for IB physics. Three examples will be described here now. Firstly, weight. Every mass on Earth feels a force due to the gravitational attraction on it. This force is called weight. For example, the pull by the Earth on the rocket. W equals mg is the way we calculate the size of the force or weight W for a mass m. The gravitational field strength g at the Earth's surface is 9.81 newtons per kilogram, which tells us that every kilogram at the Earth's surface experiences a force of approximately 10 newtons. So, for example, a mass of 82 kilograms has a weight of 820 newtons, if we assume g is 10 newtons per kilogram. We draw the force of weight from the centre of gravity of the body towards the centre of the Earth which is usually vertically downwards in a diagram. Another important force is the reaction force. When two objects touch, each exerts a force on the other one. The re reaction force is perpendicular to the surface that exerts it. The chair exerts reaction forces on the woman. She also has weight and exerts forces on the chair, but they are not shown here. A body travelling through a fluid medium, such as air or water, will experience a drag force, which slows it down. We talked about this in the previous video, about terminal speed. This arrow is feeling a drag force by the air, which acts in the opposite direction to its motion. The arrow also exerts a force on the air, but that is not shown here. Every quantity has its unit. Forces are measured in newtons. 1 newton is the force that accelerates a mass of 1 kilogram by 1 meter per second squared. When more than one force acts on an object, we can combine their effects into one vector using vector addition. The simplest method is adding the vectors nose to tail. You may be more familiar with the parallelogram rule and that will always give exactly the same results. This is a diagram of a ball on a string pulled to one side. It experiences two forces, its weight, W, which is straight downwards, and the pull of the string on the ball, T. To calculate the combined effect of the two forces on the ball, we imagine them acting nose to tail. It doesn't matter which order we take them in, but it is important we draw them to scale and with correct directions. Here is force T, drawn with correct size and direction. Now W is drawn with its tail, touching the nose of T. The resultant force, which would have the same effect as T and W combined, is R, and is drawn from the beginning of T and joins the end of W. 
So instead of forces T and W on the ball, we would achieve the same effect by replacing them with force R. The opposite process to combining vectors is called resolution. Here a single force is split into two, which are at right angles to each other. When the directions are at right angles to each other, components of force and acceleration are independent of each other. The force on a box pulled by a rope at an angle to the ground can be resolved into its components. Here is the horizontal force which will accelerate it along the ground and the vertical force which will counteract its weight. This diagram shows only the resolution of the force in the rope into its horizontal and vertical components. To complete the diagram we would, ha we would have to add the weight of the box, the upwards reaction of the ground on the box, and the effects of friction opposing the motion of the box. This block is hanging in equilibrium and we know that the three forces, Ta, Tb and W, must be equal to each other as vectors. So the only ones which contribute horizontal forces are Ta and Tb, and they must be equal to each other to the left and to the right. So we draw those in, and then using the angles of the strings, we can find the vertical components of the tensions, and we can see that the tension in B is therefore much greater than the tension in A. And so the answer to this question is letter D. The answer to this puzzle is that the floating boat does feel its weight because this is true of every mass on Earth. The boat is in vertical equilibrium, so the upthrust of the water will be equal and opposite to the weight.